transition matrices are all about probabilities and long-term probabilities most of the time as well. What you need to know about transition matrices is that they need to equal to 1. Okay, These are always, um, for proper transition matrices, as a decimal. So if that was 95%, that was 52%, you could work out the bottom two of these and then convert it into a transition matrix. For example, this one would be 5% and this one would be 48%. And that, as a transition matrix, is not uh, it's 0 0.95, 0 0.05, 0 0.52, 0 0.05, and 0.48. So that's the transition matrix. Now, when a when you come across a transition matrix problem, you'll be asked for the S zero, which is your start, starting value basically. Um, and then the, the formula you use is your transition matrix to the power of time multiplied by your S0 and that equals your long-term thing. So once you get your transition matrix and your standard, your starting value, sorry, and this time thing here depends on the question but it's how many months or weeks or days or whatever it is whatever it is that um, the question is giving you and you come out with, with an answer of what happens after that amount of time for that particular problem. So what you then do is you can get into something called a steady state. To get there you use a big time value. Okay. So something like 50. So you plug that into your calculator, you put your transit, you define your transition matrix, define your S0, do your 50, do it all on your calculator, come out with an answer. And then you do 51 just to test. And if you come out with the same answer, you're at a steady state. If you come out with a different answer, go to a bigger number. And then keep going until you get a steady state. They will hit a steady state sooner or later. To show you how these questions come together, we're going to do question 17 off page 859 in our textbook. It says if a train is late on one day, there is a 15% chance the same train will be late the next day. If the train is on time one day, there's a 40% chance that it will be late the next day. So 15%, 40%. That means if it was late on the first day, there is an 85% chance it will be on time the next day. If it was late one day, it was 40% chance it will be late the next day. So that probably should be there and then that will be 60%. So as a transition matrix that is 0 0.15, 0 0.85, 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. Okay. The next thing we need is our S0 matrix and it says we will be on time on Monday. So let's say, what was it, that was late one day, late 40% chance will be late, so that is 0.4. I've got that the wrong way around. So late is up the top here. It's late on the first day. Okay, so there's my S0. And we need to find the probability that the train will be on time the following Monday. So we'll be looking at the bottom one, but the following Friday, sorry. So we've got our transition matrix to the power of Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so five days multiplied by our transition matrix, our starting matrix, sorry. And that comes out at, if you do that on your calculator, so that comes out at this. There's a 0 0.319 there and a 0 0.681 there. Now, when you translate that back into a percentage, there's a 68.1, so 60, this one here, 68.1% chance. It's a terrible eight of that train being on time that following on that Friday. 